Welcome to Canines for America. My name is Ryan, and that's Siren. And today, we're working on the sick man. Let's get started. Welcome back. So today we are going to start the beginning process of teaching and explaining to you guys the contrastive method. This is our contrastive method 101 video. So we're just going to walk you through the five basic commands using the contrastive method. Now remember, I know you guys have, have watched a training methods video already. So you understand the contrastive method is by far my favorite. It's my go-to method, especially when I want to develop uh, the reflex arc in the organism's brain. Uh, now all the dogs that uh, you'll see here today, the Melanois Project dogs, our rescue dog, and even Siren, our 11 year old, uh, were all trained only from uh, birth to 12 months of age on the contrastive method. After the 12th month, we then discard the contrastive method because um, the skill set has already been uh, established. Communication with the canine has already been established. Uh, the reflex arcs that the computer programming in the brain, the code has already been written. And now we're, uh, we go into what you've already seen. We go to the food method. Uh, the food method is kind of our, our, ma our maintenance package uh, that we continue on with toy, etc. after we've already developed uh, the conditional reflexes within the canine. Now, uh, remember guys, what you need, the tools that you need uh, for your contrastive method, especially if you're just starting the contrastive method and working the basic command, um, I prefer to start with a, an eight foot, or uh, excuse me, an eight inch uh, lead, um, a thin, link chain. I don't prefer the, the, the bigger uh, link chain. I like the small thin chain. Um, again, what I'm trying to use with the chain is I'm more concerned about the sound, the sound that the chain makes. That's what I want to hear. I want, that's what the dog is going to hear. I'm not using it to, to, uh, to yank on the dog's uh, the neck. I don't want to create a stinger within that uh, within that canine any nerve damage i'm just again looking for the sound that's what the dog picks up because eventually as we write that computer language and we create those reflex arcs within our canine all i have to do is i can have my dog off leash and again that's the goal that we want to get to so that's where when we start here today our our goal our future episodes is having these canines your canine completely off leash we have to start here, work through the process, but that's what we want. So I can just put this chain in my pocket. And if the canine's not listening to me, right? Or excuse me, if the canine's not looking at me, right? The canine's not listening to me. So in order to get my, that communication established, if there's some external stimuli that takes the canine away from me, all I have to do is jingle this chain in my pocket, bring it out, the canine, their supersonic hearing will pick up on that chain. I will get their attention immediately. And so therefore I can give them the unconditioned stimuli, a hand signal, and get them to perform the action that they've been developed uh, to learn. So again, today you're gonna need your thin link chain, eight inch lead, and then your beef stew meat. We love to use food and not any other treats because we're not going to dehydrate the animal. All right, so what we're doing in the contrastive method, we're combining the mechanical method with the food reward method. Very classical approach. So it's a little bit of a correction, but the correction is mostly to get the attention, to develop the communication with the canine, and then boom, we immediately pop them with a paycheck with their food. So timing is very important in the very beginning stages of developing um, the basic command with our canine using the contrastive method. We want to be quick with our action and then we want to be quick with our payment. So pairing those two together um, is very, very important. We don't want to be delayed in our payment after we get the dog to do the action. Um, we don't want to be uh, coercive 
with this chain. We, we, we don't want to try to instill any type of a punishment or a negative um, because then, and I know uh, you're going to be seeing our behavioral reaction videos, um, we don't want to create a negative behavioral reaction. Um, but again, based on the dog's temperament, um, chloric, sangui, melancholic, phlegmatic, the contrastive method works with all of those temperaments. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to go ahead and get Siren. Um, our 11 year old who's already been conditioned on all this gear and on this method. And we're gonna show you, you can see Shy, uh, Siren's already shaking. There's our chloric, even at 11 years old, right? 11 year old chloric canine, she sees the gear, she knows exactly what's gonna happen. She's excited to train, she, uh, right? Because what we also wanna do is make sure when we're using the contrastive method or any training method that we're using that it's enjoyable for the canine. Um, so they always remember no matter what it is, when we get ready to train, the dog gets incredibly excited. We build that excitation that they get to do something fun because training is always fun. It's not work. Even though it's obedience, we want to make the obedience fun. Um, so Siren's been conditioned on that. Um, so let's go ahead and let's get started. I'm going to bring Siren um, over into uh, a heel of Foos. So I'm going to use some unconditioned stimuli. Siren. I'll bring her over. She goes into the sit. Now, remember guys, with putting on the chain, okay, so it's the first time. So even as a puppy, you know, canines are not gonna be used to it. They're not gonna maybe want this around their neck. They might be a little fearful of it. We don't want to enhance that, right? So you're gonna go into your, your pouch, right? That's hidden behind your back. Take out your piece of beef stew meat. We want it to be in the center of the chain as we open it up in a loop. I'm gonna bring it down slowly. The dog eats the piece of meat, good girl. And now I have the chain around Miss Siren. Good girl, Siren. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna gently grab the back. I'm gonna take my eight inch lead and then I'm gonna clip it on to Siren. Now I have control of my canine and I'm ready to work. So again, what the chain is gonna allow me to do is become that guide. So in the beginning, the head halter video, you've seen, bless you, Siren, you've seen that head halter video. That's a phenomenal new training technique, Schwagen, to use to get the canine's attention. This is a little bit of an older method with a contrastive, my favorite method, but you can also start to use the head halter as well. So what we wanna do is we wanna teach Siren the sit command. So she's already sitting, so I'm gonna, free. I'm gonna have my dog walk around in some commotion. Now remember, the beef stew meat allows me to naturally navigate my canine because she's following the smell. So that's what I want to do. Naturally following the smell, the short lead, seats, a little bit of the chain, pop with the food. A little bit of the chain, okay? The 45 degree angle, getting the dog in the back, the food in your 45, which will give her a natural sit. Then I can go down her back, good girl, and reinforce. Free, five by five area is all you need with the contrastive method. Bringing her around, seats, good, ah, little correction. Release the tension on the lead once we have the positioning of the canine. So once the dog performs the action, don't keep holding tension on the lead, okay? I'll relax my lead. I'll relax the tension, gentle, and then I'll pay my canine. Free. I'll release her again. Have her go about her business, gently moving her around, gently moving her around. She's anticipating. Clorox are very good. Foos, very good at anticipation. Seats, 45, 45 with my lead. Release my tension, come down, and pay. Foos, seats, good girl, good girl, and pay, free. 